Like all good fencing projects, this one starts out with the post hole digger. But I gotta tell you that I didn't actually dig all these posts by hand. I instead used my auger and then I filled the holes back in so I could take the post hole digger, pull the dirt out easily, stick it in my wheelbarrow and haul it off. I just didn't have a place to leave the dirt here on the site. Now this project is about building a curved fence. You can see the kind of curve here. This fence kind of hugs a curved driveway. And I thought I'd make the video because there are a few tricks involved in building a curved fence. You know, most fencing practices are kind of all about the straight fence. Okay, here is where we're at. I've got the posts rough in, roughed in. You can see that they kind of describe this arc. This will be the gate, kind of sloped over. So we have one more over here. There's a lot of wires here, so I haven't figured that out yet. But anyway, there's gonna be a little bit of fencing over here. This will be our gate. And then this just kind of describes our arc following the driveway. One, two, three, four, five posts, six feet apart. I got my mixer set up over here and my wheelbarrow. So I'm gonna mix my concrete and I'm gonna fill this one in first. This will be kind of like my reference point. Get this one in and then build off of it, each one being as square to the last as possible, even though they're all gonna have a little bit of a curve. Now you definitely don't need a concrete mixer or anything fancy to put in a fence. But I would say that having a mixer is a lot easier than not having a mixer. And it kind of does a better job of mixing as long as you get the mixture just right in terms of the water and the concrete. But I do feel really strongly about the value of pre-mixed concrete when you're building a fence. It's just, it's just so much better to mix that stuff ahead of time instead of mixing it in the hole. You mix it in the hole, you're gonna end up with dry spots. I guarantee you, it's just not gonna be quite as good. I also use the foot trowel on this one. I am a firm believer in the foot trowel. I also have a junk level that I use on these projects. It's a good level, but it's junky enough that I can get concrete on it and not worry about it. Here's another look at the mixer in action. I ended up having to buy 80 pound bags of concrete. Don't do that. Get the 60 pound bags. The 80 pound bags of concrete are like 10 times heavier than the 60 pound bags. Uh, don't breathe the dust. Mix it nice and well so it's kind of like a thick clumpy mud. Don't add too much water and you should be all set. The reason I focus so much on the concrete here is that I'm just a firm believer that a really good foundation for your fence really good concrete, good deep wide holes, and very plumb posts, like posts that are just perfect. I believe that all that is essential to a good fence. If you screw that stuff up, you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle all the way as you build the fence itself. So take a little extra time on this and it's gonna pay you back in the long run. Okay, you guys see this? This is the posts all in the ground with the concrete. Arcing it out. And nice and kind of true to one another. Not totally like flat or anything because you couldn't be flat, but true to one another in the ground. This is my gate. There's going to be like a simulated post over here where all the wires are. And uh, all these guys are going to be cut down. These are currently like five feet, six feet, different heights. It's going to be a four foot fence. So I'm going to cut them down. But before I do that, because I don't want any wiggling on these posts, I'm going to let them cure. 24 hours. All right, back at the curved posts and the concrete's all set up. Posts are nice and solid. So first thing to do is to make some measurements. It's gonna be a four foot fence. So I'm gonna bring it up uh, four foot, make marks, and then work down for my uh, framing members. But I'm not gonna cut it at four feet because my posts are gonna stick up a couple inches. All right, so I got the fence uh, post chopped to the right height, uh, just over four feet, I went four feet, two inches. And uh, I just made a simple storyboard here. Uh, this is the way I'm gonna measure everything the same for my uh, two top pieces. 
basically this was this on the storyboard this is the top of the post two inches down is my uh, flat horizontal piece and then you have the um, uh, vertical piece right here so the top of the fence has two pieces the bottom has one and this will just be a quick way to make it all consistent All right, I've got the top mark with my storyboard, story pole thing, and I've got the bottom uh, indicated with the string. I might move the bottom around a little bit. This is my high point right here. Basically, if you're building a fence like this, you gotta think about like your highs and your lows if you want it level. If you want it level, you gotta start at your, either your lowest point or your highest point and either work up or down, d uh, depending on if you want a slightly taller or slightly shorter fence. This one's almost perfectly level, but on the ground, you probably can't see this, on the ground there's a little bit of a hump right here. So I think my base plate is gonna center off the middle and work its way over and over. I haven't decided that yet. Uh, but here's just a note on dimensions of stuff. Uh, these posts are six feet apart. It's more typical with a fence to go with eight feet, but uh, they're six feet apart because I didn't want the curve to have too long of straight sections. You know, if it was just, imagine just one big straight section and one big straight section, It'd be kind of like two flat sections, but instead with six footers, I get a little bit of curve. The other reason six footers are good is that I've got 12 foot lumber. So uh, the, the, foot, the fence is going to be made out of cedar, cedar for the frame and cedar for the two by twos. I can just chop them in half and use them in my six foot spans. All right, now this is the only tricky thing about building this curved fence. The only tricky thing is that not all of your framing members, like this guy, not all of them are gonna be cut square. So these two are straight line. This hasn't, uh, it hasn't started to curve yet. So this cut was square and that one was square and it worked out just fine. But this dude right here is starting to curve. So you're not gonna have a square cut on either end. I don't know, this one's just sitting here, but just so you can see it, it comes in flush over here and at regular angles. So that angle is not going to match this one or anything like that. This guy's flush, oh, minus a hair, but. All right, quick note about dimensions. This is the two by twos, which as you might imagine are inch and a half ish by inch and a half. Pretty much inch and a half. This guy's a little bit wider. So, just a note on uh, placement of these rails. They are a quarter inch in, just because you don't want to come flush. It just doesn't look right. You gotta have a little reveal here. Quarter inch in, that leaves inch and three quarter on either side for the picket. So the pickets will come up in here. Those are the two by twos. And there'll be a top plate on top of it. All right, here's one way to capture the angle on these spans. So, you know, basically your your piece, your rail, isn't gonna be perfectly flush. It's not gonna be perfectly square on either end. It's gonna have a little bit of an angle just because of the curve. So here's one way to do it. Uh, number one, measure your span. This is a shorter one, it's just over five feet. Measure your span, then cut your piece two inches long 
two or three inches long. Then you can just set it down on your posts and from underneath, just capture your angle. So get it exactly where you want it and then capture your angle. Like so. That way you get a nice perfect fit every time with your angle on either side being flush to the post. All right, framing check. We'll start at this end. You've got your three pieces, your three rails in. I didn't show you this, but these are some triple coated screws just because there is gonna be water here and they're just screwed in flush. I'll probably put a little dab of sealing on these guys when I'm done. Anyway, uh, working on down the curve. You can kind of see the curve from this end. Working down the curve. All level on the top. The bottom ended up being level too. I thought it was going to be humped in the middle over here, but it ended up just being level, no problem. And then I didn't show you this, but uh, these guys have all kinds of varied utilities over here. So I did a not too deep cedar two by four over on this side and kind of tied it together. I think it's going to look good overall. I might need one concrete bolt or one more fastener just to make that a little bit more stable, but pretty good all right so next steps caps gate pickets all right my apologies uh, camera fizzled out and I lost all the footage from putting on the pickets but it was the most straightforward part of the job you didn't miss much basically I just used this uh, four inch block between each one to space them out I uh, used those weatherproof screws I told you about earlier and cut them to length just running along the span. And each one was pre-drilled just because my cedar's a little bit on the dry side. All right, so not all fence post caps are created equally, but they almost all equally will spin on the top of your post if you're not careful. So I just do a basic thing of putting one treated, coated, ringed, hardcore nail in there along with the screw. That way you've got two points of contact and there's no way these caps are gonna spin. I use these guys, they're used for siding, but they work really well for this application. All right, let's get into the construction of the gate. The gate is, I think, it's like the most important part of a fence. If you build a fence for someone and you say, here's your fence, they will walk over to the gate and try it out. And if they have a good experience with that gate, they have a good experience with the fence. It's kind of like where humans meet fences is at the gate. So you gotta build a really nice gate. Measure it three, four, five times. Make sure your diagonals are perfectly equal so you have a perfect square which will fit in your hole measured exactly right. I'm just saying don't wimp out and go real quick on the gate. Take some time, drink some water, feel good, build your gate. And you will see that this gate is built to match the fence. You can also go with a contrasting gate, totally different design, but in this case, I want to match the fence. All right, so this is gonna be pretty similar to what I did on the actual pickets over on the fence, but the difference being that I'm not going with the four inch spacing because I need these to be exactly equidistant. So I just measured the internal spacing and I'll divide by numbers of pickets to get right around four inches. I think it's gonna be a little bit tighter, but it's better to be a little bit tighter or a little bit wider than uh, to be irregular, at least in my opinion. Now note that at this point, 
even though this thing has a bunch of pickets on it, this gate is completely weak. It needs a diagonal cross member. It needs that so badly to be stiff and rigid and to hold its own weight just from the hinges. The only thing to note here is that this cross piece tends to come up from the hinges and over to the latch. So your latch will be on your high side. You know, that kind of makes sense. The forces are going to be pulling down on it. So you kind of want to be pushing against the cross piece. All right, now there's nothing wrong with overbuilding your gate. Nothing wrong with it. I use these big old lag screws, like serious lag screws, to lock in that cross member. You want this gate strong enough for some little kid to swing on it someday and for the whole thing not to collapse. I also take a second and screw my pickets into that cross member just to add some more triangles. All right, now there is the old adage, which I completely believe in, which is that you got to use the right tool for the job. And in this case, what you would use is a socket set attached to your impact driver, and you would drive these bolts in to attach the hinges and the hardware. Uh, but I left my socket set back behind at the shop, and it's like a 30-minute drive each way. It was going to kill an hour. So instead, I used my little micro sort of emergency socket set that I keep in the truck, and it worked. It worked just fine, but it ended up being a reminder that the right tool is always better for a job. I even had to pull out my wrench set, thinking that my half inch wrench would be better than the socket, and in some uh, cases it was. So it is good to be able to use hand tools and low tech stuff, but I really should have probably got my socket set. You can also use an airbag to raise your gate up. And I have done that, and I actually do that once in a while, especially when I'm installing doors. But, but scraps of wood work just as well. In some ways, they're better because if you lay your scraps out, you've got a little bit more surface area for that gate to rest on. All right, now when you build your gate, don't cheap out with a bad latch. Now these are the best I've found. They are, I think they're called a post latch gate. And this isn't sponsored or anything. I buy these things by the case. Uh, Ever built post latch gate, gate kit. Post latch gate kit. They're just the best. They're really nice. You can open them from the back and the front. And uh, they typically have a handle on here. I'm still kind of debating if I'm gonna put the handle on. It seems to me that there are plenty of places to grab and it might look a little bit off. All right, that's the curb fence build. Uh, hit me with a comment down below if you have questions, or suggestions, or anything like that. Uh, thanks for checking it out. I got some other fence build videos on my channel if you're interested in fencing. And otherwise, I'll just see you in the next project.